is good everybody welcome back to another my damn toys video today ladies and gentlemen we have a recap style video i took to my community tab and asked you guys if you guys would like kind of like a recap or a refresher on the mdt pick fed before we get to episode 17 of vindication this upcoming few days still shooting for probably between monday and wednesday for the episode to be posted however guys i figured today we could get on here and we could kind of recap some of the feuds and everything that's taking place on the show that way when the show gets here i mean you could just go back and watch all of the pick feds from you know the start to now if you wanted to you know if you wanted to sit there i know some of the first few episodes definitely are difficult to get through with all the posing and you know learning how to kind of get the show the way i want it to but if you guys wanted to do that you could start from the very beginning but i'm going to recap since the royal rumble that way you know we got a little bit of a refresher everything like that so we're going to go through all of the feuds and everything that is setting up and kind of taking place on the show right now between the entire roster and i figure we could start things off with the elite champion kenny omega and the you know just the elite championship feud that's going on or just kind of the main feud that's taking place and then we will work our way back from there with the mid card championships tag titles all those different things as we approach my damn nation so starting back at the royal rumble guys if you guys do remember kenny omega was eliminated by adam cole after you know the creepy vignette kind of teasing finn balor's return adam cole did come up behind kenny omega and eliminate him from the rumble and if you guys didn't know starting off i mean kenny omega has had weird phone calls visions nightmares about finn balor and demons and all these different voices in his head and all these different things you know uh him and him and the bullet club did kill Finn Balor back at Blackout or they buried him you know they put him in the coffin or whatever way back at our first pay-per-view ever they buried Finn Balor and then you guys know what took place at the MDT Royal Rumble so Kenny Omega thought that Cole was responsible for the vignette and the and the trickery and all of those things at the Royal Rumble so he and the Bullet Club actually you know beat Adam Cole up they tied him up they strung him up and they questioned him about it you know they sat him down in the chair they went out for the Bullet Club celebration and they had him in the chair and you know they were they were talking to him they were pretty much you know asking him why he's doing this and all these things Adam Cole denied it and said that you know maybe it's the real Finn Balor Kenny's not having it you know he, he's definitely shooting down the idea but during this this whole time the Wyatt Colt interrupts the segment and beats down the Bullet Club and stands tall after the Wyatt Colt stands tall man a mystery member of the Wyatt Colt is revealed as Alistair Black so Alistair Black is revealed as a member of the Wyatt Colt little mystery stuff going on and at the end of the episode we pan to Kenny Omega's GM's office and Finn Balor's jacket is actually missing from the wall so that's how that episode goes off the air Meanwhile, the Wyatt Colt has seized and earned, saying that saying that now that they have that, they will run Vindication and be all powerful and, you know, teasing a lord and talking about a lord and all these different things while talking about the urn. They talk about how how we're going to meet a lord soon and their lord soon and how it will be amazing and they'll be all powerful and all these different things. On Vindication, the following episode, in the main event of that show, Kenny Omega as interim GM comes out. You know, the Bullet Club has this big plan to invade the Wyatt Colt versus Fashion Police tag team qualifying matchup to, you know, get revenge on the Wyatt Colt. So Kenny Omega comes out, changes the rules of the matchup to a no DQ match so that the Bullet Club can get involved and, you know, beat them down and, and try to ruin their odds and ruin their chances of making it to Hell's Gate to challenge for the Young Bucks Tag Team Championships. So while they're doing so, the Wyatt Colt actually interrupts again and stops Bullet Club. Total chaos ensues. The back and forth, you know, all the different things. Wyatt Colt actually wins and gets the number one contendership and tries to summon the Lord after the matchup. So they win the matchup. They beat the Fashion Popo. They have the the number one contendership for the tag team championships at hell's gate they try to summon the lord that they have been speaking of but no one shows up nothing shows up and bray wyatt seems to be upset so after no one shows up wyatt lays out omega you know voicing his frustration and the cult stands tall again as that vindication goes off the air so on our next episode of vindication in the main event bray wyatt challenges pete dunn this was an elimination chamber elite championship qualifier you know the winner of this matchup will go on to hell's gate to fight for the elite championship in the chamber with kenny omega bray wyatt is challenging Pete Dunne and he defeats Pete Dunne and qualifies for that elite championship elimination chamber matchup so the white colt try to summon the lord again after this is said and done and everybody thinks that the lord is showing up things go black but it is actually the bullet club the bullet club shows up total chaos again both teams fighting and trading blows adam cole gets involved aj styles gets involved johnny gargano even gets involved in the iron man championship feud there with cody Rhodes. so total chaos ensues everybody beating the hell out of each other you know you got some elimination chamber tie-ins right there and everything going on the show ends in total craziness as everybody is beat down and beating the hell out of each other as we head 
head into Hell's Gate. So when we get to Hell's Gate, you guys know the Elite Championship Elimination Chamber. Kenny Omega, Aleister Black, Adam Cole, AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Bray Wyatt all do war. In the final moments of the Elite Chamber at Hell's Gate, Bray, Black, and Omega are the final three. Aleister Black and Bray Wyatt have teamed up, you know, the, the Wyatt Colt, members of the Wyatt Colt, so they beat the hell out of Kenny Omega. He's literally lifeless, a bloody freaking mess. They try to summon the Lord again, and they put the urn down, and, you know, he's trying to summon the Lord. He's trying to summon the Lord. The, lo the Lord does not show up, and Bray gets pissed off. Lights go out, and the Undertaker appears. The Lord seems to be the Undertaker, so Bray drops to his knees. He's worshiping him. He talks about the Lord again, so the Lord is confirmed as the Undertaker. That is the, the being that, you know, the, that Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt Colt have been talking about for weeks. Bray wants Undertaker to sacrifice Omega to finish him off, but Taker turns on Bray and Black, tombstone pile driving and choke slamming them both as Kenny Omega crawls his lifeless body over to both of them and eliminates both of them to retain his elite championship. So Undertaker double crossing Bray Wyatt and Aleister Black and eliminating them, getting that, costing them their elite championship hopes and everything like that. And apparently he is not going to be their lord. Following the matchup though, Druids in black coats bring out a coffin and the coffin door opens up to reveal Finn Balor's jacket that was missing from the wall all those weeks ago on Vindication. The Druids reveal themselves as Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, Tomatonga, and Bad Luck Fale. It looks like Finn Balor is alive. Omega in total disbelief as the My Damn Nation sign lights up and shines bright. It looks as if Finn Balor is sending a message to Kenny Omega beyond the grave for a challenge for the Elite Championship at My Damn Nation. Omega is in total disbelief. He can't believe it again. On the following vindication, Omega wakes up in his office and sees that I'm Alive has been etched in his desk with a Balor logo. The rest of the Bullet Club show up in his office telling them that they don't feel safe. They don't feel safe on vindication, so they tell Kenny they're leaving. You know, Marty Skrull had his skull fractured, which we'll get into later. The rest of the Bullet Club has been beat up from the events of Hell's Gate, and they don't feel safe on the show. So they're leaving. They're going back to the house, and, you know, you know, they tell Kenny that he has lost his mind, that he's lost his marbles, that he needs help. So later on the show is revealed that both Cody and the Bucks get taken out before they can leave the building. They actually don't make it out. Cody has been assaulted. The Bucks are actually specifically taken out by Braun and Kane, who attack them at Hell's Gate, which we'll cover in the tag title segment of the video. So Kenny has no help, man. The club has been laid out. And at the end of the show, Kenny is alone in his office when the TV turns on with Carl Anderson and the rest of Finn's allies. Carl says that they are real, you know, referring back to the fact that earlier in the episode, Kenny said that this is all fake, you know, this isn't real, this is, you know, I'm gonna put it into all of this. You know, he tells them that they're real and saying that they will see him very, very soon. After that, the TV is cut off. Kenny sees a vision of a demon Finn Balor and knocks his desk over in total fear as the show goes off the air. So Kenny Omega is still doing battle with demons in his head and voices and all these creepy things going on. He has uh, double crossed with the Wyatt Colt and everything like that, but it looks like the Wyatt Colt has switched their focus over to the Undertaker, Aleister Black, Bray Wyatt situation, but at the moment, it seems that Finn Balor is the number one contender for the Elite Championship heading into My Damn Nation. We haven't seen him, you know, he was buried alive, we still haven't seen the man, and there are signs pointing that he is talking beyond the grave, and you know everything like that. He does have his allies that are helping him out with the situation, at least for the time being, but uh, the Bullet Club is a total mess right now, totally afraid. They've been taken out by many people, you know, they've made all these enemies over the time of the pick fed, and it looks like Kenny Omega, you know, so that story will continue on as we head into the next episode of Vindication. Alright guys, now we are diving into the Iron Man Championship with Cody Rhodes over on Vindication. So basically this story starts off, you guys know that Cody Rhodes did win the Iron Man Championship from Rusev at the Royal Rumble. After doing so, there was no number one contender for the championships and we don't do rematches in MDT. It's not a for sure thing in the contract that you get a rematch. So there was no number one contender for the Iron Man Championship. Cody comes out and he calls out a challenge to anybody in the back that wants to challenge for the title. Gargano, Johnny Gargano, a new signee for Vindication answers the challenge. They talk trash back and forth, and during the go-home, during the chaos of the Wyatt Colt and Bullet Club, Cody actually tries to uh, hit Aleister Black with a chair and takes out Pete Dunne, and then shortly after that, Gargano jumps over the barricade and super kicks Cody, taking him out on the uh, the go-home show before we got to Hell's Gate in their parking lot brawl. Speaking of which, at Hell's Gate, both square off in a epic parking lot brawl where both of the guys beat the hell out of each other. You know, Orange Cassidy was featured in that matchup as well, but Cody practically kills Gargano, right? Probably the most brutal thing I've ever seen in a pig-fed match where he hits the back of his neck on the truck door, falls to the concrete. He goes for the pin, but Pete Dunn comes from behind, attacks Cody with a chair, bitter end, paying him back for that chair shot on the go-home show on Vindication. Cody ends up falling on Gargano 
Gargano to retain the Iron Man Championship. On the following vindication, Cody is attacked, but uh, Pete Dunne was shortly interviewed after that. And, uh, you know, about the situation, he says that, you know, it wasn't him, even though he attacked Cody at Hell's Gate. The attack at Hell's Gate was warranted, but the attack on vindication was not warranted, and he wants to, you know, potentially go after that Iron Man Championship. So it looks like Cody Rhodes right now is wrapped up with not only Pete Dunne, but also Johnny Gargano if he's not dead. So the Iron Man Champion Cody Rhodes has been, uh, he's, he's had a rough go the last few weeks, you know, with Hell's Gate and Vindication. Now, if we go over to our other singles championship, so basically the Revolutionary Championship, Marty Skrull was the champion. He's been champion for a minute there. You know, there was no Revolutionary title match at either the Royal Rumble or Hell's Gate. So, a lot of fans pissed off, MDT pissed off, that the championship is not being represented there. You know, it's the Revolutionary title, man. It's, it's about fighting, and it's about revolution, and it's about making a difference. Well, Marty held on to that championship. He was holding it hostage, and at Hell's Gate, he was struck in the face by steel steps by Braun Strowman fracturing his skull and putting him on the shelf as of now, and he was forced to relinquish the championship. This led to Eric Bischoff announcing a one-night revolutionary title tournament to crown a new champion. Shinsuke Nakamura, Bray Wyatt, Aleister Black, and AJ Styles all competing as participants in the tournament. They were the, you know, the runners-up in the Elite Championship Elimination Chamber at Hell's Gate. You know, they were the big main event talents, and Bischoff felt that those guys probably deserved it the most. So in the tournament, Aleister Black defeats Shinsuke Nakamura, and AJ Styles defeats Bray Wyatt, and then AJ Styles ends up defeating Aleister Black after the Undertaker and his eerie distractions and things like that in the matchup and he becomes the next revolutionary champion. So AJ Styles actually does not have anything going on right now. We have two vindications left until My Damn Nation and AJ Styles does not have an opponent at the moment. He just became champion but he is holding an open challenge on this new episode of Vindication. Will that lead to a number one contender? Who the hell knows man but we will see on this episode of Vindication what comes of that. If we dive into the tag team championship situation. Now, this one's kind of a deep one, so buckle the hell up, Bradley. Not as deep as Omega, but it's pretty deep. So, we go all the way back to sold out in the main event. You guys know that Braun Strowman took on Kenny Omega for the Elite Championship. Braun is actually taken out by the entire Bullet Club in this matchup. He ends up losing. Kenny does retain the Elite Championship, but after the matchup, he gets out of the ring, and, you know, he's standing there in front of the ring, and he gets drug up under the ring by a gloved hand at the end of the show. Now, hold on to that information for a moment as we fast forward a little bit into the Tag Team Number 1 Contender Tournament that was announced to determine a challenger at Hell's Gate for the Young Bucks. So in this in this tournament, guys, we had Fashion Popo, American Alpha, Wyatt Colt, and Rusev Day. Wyatt Colt being Harper and Rowan. The Popo defeat American Alpha in an upset victory, and the Wyatt Colt defeats Rusev Day. The Wyatt Colt end up beating up Bullet Club to end Episode 13 like we covered before in the video. In the main event of said show, Wyatt Colt taking on the Fashion Popo in the finals. The winner will go to Hell's Gate to take on the Young Bucks. Kenny comes out as interim GM and changes the matchup to a no DQ and they try to get involved, right? Bullet Club tries to get involved. The Young Bucks get beaten down. Wyatt Colt ends up winning the tournament and standing tall over the Bullet Club, becoming number one contenders, and they win the tournament. On the go-home show before Hell's Gate, the Bucks actually end up getting some revenge on them before they get to Hell's Gate. So the Bucks retaliate, you know, after getting their butts kicked for a little bit there, and we are heading into our matchup at Hell's Gate. So at Hell's Gate, the Bucks and Colt have a great matchup. It was a really fun matchup. But at the end of the match, a returning Braun Strowman and Kane come out of nowhere, masked up. They look insane. They beat the hell out of everyone. Nick Jackson, Matt Jackson, Wyatt Colt. Nobody was safe on this night, man. They beat the hell out of both members and both teams. Standing tall, they injured Skrull. They laid out everybody, laying waste to everyone. And then they did the same thing on the following vindication, taking out the Young Bucks and, you know, just beating the hell out of them. So Kane and Braun are on absolute destruction, man. They, they are clear just favorites to win the Tag Team Championships. They are doing over the Bucks. Right now, it's looking like they are, uh, you know, they're tied up with the Bucks, but they're also tied up in the Wyatt Colt. It, you know, there, there's a lot of stuff going on right there. And you also have Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows lurking around with the Bullet Club 2, feuding with them. So who knows what we're going to get for the Tag Team Championships at My Damn Nation. A lot of things circulating right there, but that's something that you definitely want to keep an eye on with the Tag Team Division as we head into the big show. And actually, it's already announced that Cody and the Bucks will not be on this episode of Vindication, so Kenny will be alone. And then the last little feud here before, I think this is the last feud that we have to cover. 
outside of maybe some small stuff. We're diving into the Bray Wyatt and Undertaker feud, or the Wyatt Colton Undertaker feud here. So, the Wyatt Colt have been going on since the very beginning. If you guys have been around since the beginning, you guys know that they have been a staple on Vindication since the beginning, but it sold out at the end of the show. They did a little uh, promo, and Bray Wyatt revealed a new member in a sheet mask holding on to an urn. So, that was at the very end of sold out before we faded to black. Since then, the Colt and Wyatt have, you know, continued to cut scathing promos about a lord, and a divine presence and, and began to target the elite champion Kenny Omega. So they attacked Bullet Club and revealed the Sheep Man as Alistair Black finally. So the Sheep Man was revealed to be Alistair Black, the new member of the Wyatt Colt. With all the creepy calls, vignettes, and things that kept happening to Kenny, many believed that the Lord would be revealed as Finn Balor. But at Hell's Gate, it was revealed as Wyatt tried to summon the Lord that the Lord was the Undertaker. The Lord was the Undertaker the whole time. He, he double-crossed Bray Wyatt and the Colt, taking out Alistair Black and Bray Wyatt in that match matchup at the at Hell's Gate in the Elimination Chamber cost them their, their chances at the Elite Championship. And at this moment, Bray Wyatt has set his sights now on Undertaker that was his lord before, or, you know, what he thought was his lord. And also, in the Revolutionary Title Tournament, Undertaker cost Bray Wyatt versus AJ Styles in their matchup when he appeared on the stage. And, you know, he kind of took Bray Wyatt out of it. And then, again, he appeared when Aleister Black took on AJ in the main event for the Revolutionary Championship. Aleister Black, you know, he was cost in that matchup again by Undertaker. So Undertaker playing no games with the Wyatt Colt, you know, uh, they summoned him and there he was, Brad, and uh, they had to pay the consequences for that. But to me, Brad, it looks like Wyatt Colt and Undertaker are on an inevitable road that leads to my damnation in a matchup. So we'll have to see what comes of that, man. I don't know if it's going to be a handicap situation. I don't know if it's just going to be Bray. I don't know if it will be Alistair taking on Undertaker, man, but that is pretty much a recap on everything taking place on Vindication at the moment. Of course, I probably missed some details and some little things here and there, but that is pretty much the main feuds going on for all the championships and all the different things like that. But this episode is going to be really fun, man. Again, I'm shooting for probably a Tuesday or Wednesday upload of that show. May even be Thursday again. I I'm grinding hard on it. Again, there's a lot of editing on this show, so I do apologize for that. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the recap, what your thoughts were. Let me know what your favorite feuds are going on. If you guys want me to do this before I upload any DT Live after Vindication? Let me know down in the comment section below, man, but I had a ton of fun just recapping the Fed. Just fedding in general felt amazing, man. It felt incredible to get in there in the arena, film all the different stuff, you know, pose the matches, and, and just do all the different things, man. It, it, it's been a minute to get in there and consistently work, and it has felt fantastic. So, I think we have a bright thing for the Pick Fed, man. It was, you know, we were gone for a minute, but we're back at it, and it feels really, really good. So, this is excellent news, man, but I think that is going to do it for the video, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy Again, let me know what your favorite feuds are, if you guys are Vindication or MDT Live fans, or both, or what the deal is. But thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't cross the line like MDT when he didn't upload a pick fed for nearly a year. You cross